Well, here's something we probably don't talk about all that much anymore, and that's GIF animation, since a lot of people use Flash. But since it's now a built-in part of Photoshop CS2, I thought I would visit this. Now, I'm doing it with enormous text. You can see it. You may not want to create an animation quite this large, but people use this for avatars in, in chat forums or just for websites or whatever. So here's the basic idea. We're going to, first of all, make sure that we have the animation palette showing. And let's just try and make it fit nicely within our... Actually, I'll make it a little smaller because I want to be able to show you this pop-up menu, which you probably won't be able to see anyway, but at least we'll see parts of it. Okay, so what I want to do is try and create a simple animation here. It's going to give you the rough idea, and then you can see how you can use that. I'm going to uh, add a new layer and just fill it with my foreground color. My colors are black and white, of course, as you can see, and I'm going to choose Render Difference Clouds. Uh, I'm going to press Command or Control F to run that a couple of times. And I want to, basically this is one of those techniques, once you do this a couple of times, you'll basically get the idea of how it's going to look. So once you get a fairly nice pattern, we're going to press Command or Control I to invert it, and then Command or Control L for levels. And as always, of course, you can access these commands through regular menus as well. I'm just using the keyboard shortcuts. I'm going to pull this middle slider all the way down to try and create kind of this lightning bolt effect. Okay. Now, we're going to, we can do this through a couple different ways. I can either hold, see my, where my mouse is positioned on the line between the two layers, hold down Option or Alt and click to make a clipping mask. Or if I undo that, I could also press Command Option or Control Alt G. Now, this is a new shortcut in Photoshop CS2. In earlier versions of Photoshop, it was just Command or Control G. So depending on your version, will depend. So that's why this way is actually probably the safest way because it doesn't matter your version. Now I'm just going to repeat that operation a couple of times. Make a new layer, fill, run the filter. I'm pressing that command or control F shortcut a few times to get the effect that I want. Invert, levels, drag the slider down until I get more lightning bolt type stuff, static if you will, and then group with previous and then let's do one more. Same thing. Just repeat the same operation several times. Now, of course, you can create as many of these as you wish. Let's just finish this one off so we have it like that. And then group that with previous. So now, basically, if I show and hide these, you can see I have different kind of effects in here. Now, just to add a bit of drama to the whole thing, let's add a hue saturation just layer at the very top of the stack. We'll move this over so you can see it. Click the Colorize button and try and add some kind of purplish, very saturated look to it for a little more of that drama or drama if you prefer. Alright, so now we look at our animation palette. This is going to be the start and basically all I do in this animation palette is basically just say I am want a new frame and in that frame I want this layer not to be visible. And we're going to click this little button, which is the tweens, which means it will go in between the previous frame. Now, normally if you're doing an animation, you probably want it to be fairly gradual. But I want this to be pretty poppy, so I could even experiment with not tweening. I think I'm just going to tween one frame in between. And now I'm just going to repeat that operation. Click on a new frame, hide this, click on the tween button, one frame, click OK. And again, new, put this one back. Okay. Now at any time, you always have the option of clicking on this play button to see what your animation is looking like. And you see now it's creating kind of that random uh, staticky lightning bolt kind of thing that I want. And that's basically the idea. Now at this point, I could play with this idea as you can imagine any of these possibilities. Instead of using this particular uh, clouds lightning bolt type idea, I could create static, like noise, all kinds of things are possible. The beauty of the way we've done it is that this is still a type layer, so if at any point I wanted to change anything, I still could, and I would still have all the frames in my animation. So once I'm happy with it, then the final step would be save for web. Now one of the nice things about this dialog box, if I can make it now, of course I can't make it small enough. Oh, well, maybe I can move it up. Well, I can just barely see it there. If I change this to GIF, and down the very bottom, you see it sort of cut off here, but this allows me to have a pop-up list of browsers, so I can actually pop this up 
and of course right outside the filming area it's giving the choice between Safari and Internet Explorer so that I can decide which one, let's say I want to preview it in Safari. So that means without actually having to save it yet, it will actually generate a preview for me and there's my nice animated GIF looking the way it does. Now if I go back here, cancel this for a second, you might want to consider taking a look in here. For example, in my animation pal, you see it's currently set to forever, which means it'll loop around forever and ever and ever, which might be okay, but you might want to do it once or some other number. It's also possible looking at all these ones down, the, see the little timing down at the bottom, I can click on the first, whoops, hold on, click on the first frame, hold down shift, and click on the last frame, and then just have a very slight delay, because right now it's moving really quickly, and one of the things I will say to you is it really makes sense, that's why, don't just hit the play button, go to the extra effort of choosing save for web, and then preview it in a browser, because that's really the true test of how it's going to look, is looking at it in a browser, not just in the window itself. Except I think I must have hit some weird setting. Let's go back and see, shall we? Let's explore that together and see what I did. Uh, that's because I didn't s change it to GIF. If I do, now it should work. That was a nice little mistake I made there. I just assumed, of course, it would remember I was in GIF, but it is. You see, now it's a little slower because I got that slight delay. So there you go. Just There's just the basic idea, but with like a lot of things in Photoshop, the sky is the limit once you get an idea of what you can do with these animations. Hey, this is Dave Cross saying, hey, go have fun with animations. You just never know what kind of fun you can get into. See you next time.